Well, we made it to another week of NFL football. We made it all the way through. And you got to feel for the Giants, you know, if it weren't for Dexter Lawrence crossing, you know, beyond the neutral zone, they would have beaten, they would have had, you know, the Washington football team on their heads. But now Washington, now the football team, they, they, what, they, they lead the NFC East. Um, yeah, didn't expect that. No, I didn't expect that at all. You know, they technically lead by virtue of winning the divisional contest. Um, so, there you go. But everybody, except for the Giants, are 1-1 one one in the NFCs. But I'll talk about the Cowboys and the Eagles in a moment here. Uh, but the Raiders, man, they really surprised me Sunday. I mean, this was what the Buffalo Bills were supposed to do against Pittsburgh. I mean, the Raiders passed it for like 350 yards. Crazy stuff out there. The Steelers didn't know what to do. They didn't know what to do out there. I'm sitting here like, are the Steelers going to stop the pass? Are the Steelers going to stop the pass? Are they going to stop Darren Waller? Are they going to stop Ruggs or Redfro or anybody on that Raiders offense? Are they going to stop anybody from getting passes from Derek Carr? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, at all. But, I mean, speaking of things I didn't know at all, I mean... 49ers Eagles game was a little bit crazy. It was a little bit crazy. There were some crazy plays in there in this game, but the 49ers were able to get it done to get very defensive, very sluggish type game. That's the type of the game that you know teams like the 49ers like to thrive in. Very, very good fun fun game. I can't say much about the Texans Browns game. I mean a lot of people expected the Browns to come in and win. Poor Tyrod Taylor though, and this is gonna be a story for a lot of quarterbacks this week. I'm sitting here like Tyrod's injured? Dang. Are they going to put in Deshaun Watson now? Or is or is there going to be another option for the Texans? I really don't know. Um, Broncos, they beat the Jags, but it means the Jags. Come on now. Urban Meyer might go 0-17 this year as an NFL coach. This has been a rough, rough time already for Trevor Lawrence through the first couple weeks. Just a real rough time. And you know, I thought, you know, we all thought that the um, we all thought the Saints were gonna be, you know, a lot better than this, but here they are. They got dominated by the Panthers. Dominated by the Panthers defense. I mean, Javis didn't know what to do out there. I definitely let me check here. Did he throw some apple turnovers? Yes he did. Two of them. Two biscuits right in the oven. Just I I'm shocked from from week one to week two, things have changed. And we'll talk about the Packers in just a moment because that game just finished up. I'm sitting here like, For how, how, how is it that the Saints get dominated and the Packers dominate the Lions? Yeah, the Packers dominated the Lions with Aaron Jones. I mean, I, I really love Aaron Jones. I mean, I, I mean, I, I, I think I've said it on this channel at least for the last two years now. I love Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones is such a beast, man. A lot of a, a very underrated back. You know, in this in this day and age where the backs seem to don't get a lot of love, you know, aside from a couple. Um, Bills dominate the Dolphins. No two of two of two of them might be gone for a little while. I think he like hurt his ribs or something, if I'm not mistaken. I think he got a rib injury. But it doesn't look like it'll be super serious. But I mean, again, it's just like man. Quarterbacks were getting injured. Everybody was getting injured. I know there was a Giants player that got injured on Thursday night. A real scary injury. I forgot his name. A real scary injury, man. Um, but the Rams, you know, the Rams, they did all right against the Colts. Carson Wentz got injured again. I think both his ankles are injured now. He's, he's one ankle tear away from his season being over. Somebody, somebody needs to go out there and play something for the Colts. And it's not going to be Jacob Eason, I swear. Yeah, what, yeah, was it Jacob Eason? It was Jacob Eason. I was right. Yeah. Now hopefully hopefully the Colts don't have to suffer through Jacob Eason. Y'all remember him at Georgia. He wasn't really anything special. Um, Okay, Patriots-Jets was pretty expected. So Mac Jones gets his first real win in the NFL. That was kind of expected. I didn't expect the Bears to beat the Bengals, though. I mean, and Andy Dalton got injured, too. So I'm sitting here like, man. So what even is, what what is even going on? You know, maybe it's the preseason. You know, maybe maybe the preseason does help actually. If we can 
we, we can stop whining about the preseason, but I'd rather just shorten the preseason to two games, have the starters maybe come in for, you know, maybe like one, two quarters. It, okay, okay, let, let, let me look at it like this. Let's shorten the preseason to two games. Let's get to 18 games real soon, please. Please, Roger. You, you, you mess up everything else, but we can do this, right? Please? Please get us to 18 games real quick, man. I'm all, I'm still I'm still salty about this whole 17 game thing. I'll be forever salty about it. Um, l l l let's move on to these um these later afternoon games real quick here. Um, Bucks Falcons. I mean, what can you say about it? Bucks? They have scored a ton of points real quick into the season. They scored 31 in a week one. They scored 48 on the Falcons. Crazy stuff right there, man. Vikings Cardinals was on another level. If it weren't for the Vikings kickers, you know, being Vikings kickers and missing kicks in crucial situations, you know, because I mean, this was this was this was a really fun game. Really fun game, man. Um, Titans Seahawks. Like I thought this game was over by halftime, and I switched over to the Vikings Cards game to see the insanity with Gus Johnson, you know, because he's back calling NFL games this year, finally, thank God, um, but yeah, I thought the Seahawks-Titans was over because the Titans were getting dominated by the Seahawks defense, but then, lo and behold, they came back in the second half, and then ref ball came in at the end of the game, I'm sitting there like, why? Why we gotta have ref ball? This happens in the Cowboys-Chargers game, too. Why? Why so much ref ball? against the Chargers. Why? I mean, I swear there was so many penalties against the Chargers that were, you know, not really penalties against them. Not really at all. Of course, there was some calls against the Cowboys, too, but again, you know, ref ball does not discriminate. It screws both teams. It screws everybody up. And I'm sitting here like, man, can we... Have, it, it felt like the longest three-hour game I've sat through in a while with the Cowboys because I mean there's been some three-hour snooze fest but this one this one was a snooze fest of course it was a Chargers road game technically even though you know the Chargers are at home but I mean I'm sitting there like wow wow man I don't think there wasn't even a there wasn't even a touchdown in the last what 41 minutes scored by the offenses so this uh, the last 41 minutes of game time, by the way, um, and I'm sitting here like, man, how? What even is this game? What is this? It's like, the Cowboys defense is still kind of rough, but we have Zeke and Tony Pollard in, in tandem now. That That's good, right, Cowboys fans? That's good. Chargers, again, they just gotta put some pep in their step, man. You know, I mean, Herbert, Herbert balled out. Like he usually does. Herbert balls out, man. Sunday night, no. Sunday night was a thriller. Lamar Jackson versus Patrick Mahomes, a thriller. And you know, people were talking. You know, they were like, "Oh, Lamar's regressed as a pocket passer." You know, I mean, I, I, I tend, I tend to agree with that. When he threw two picks, including, you know, one by Tyron Matthew that got took it back for a pick six. But uh, ref ball kind of came in, you know, in this game as well. But it didn't really matter too much in the end. You know, Ravens really ran the ball all over that Chiefs defense. Chiefs could stop them with the run. And the Chiefs, you know, the Chiefs are going to do what the Chiefs do, you know. You know, I was a little bit worried. But I was a little bit worried with like three or four minutes left to go in the game. The Ravens had scored. And I'm sitting here like, oh boy, this is going to be... Similar to Tom Brady at the past, you know, Chiefs are the new Patriots of the NFL. It's going to be similar to Tom Brady. They're going to walk right down the field and then Clyde Edwards Hilaire fumbles. You got to be hitting me, man. How do you fumble that? How do you fumble like that, man? My goodness. And taunting is a terrible rule. Let's get that out of the way right now. It's still terrible. It will always be terrible. We can stop talking about it. It's terrible. It's a terrible rule. Let's stop it. Get it out of here. But yeah, the Lions, Lions have no hope this year. <laughs> They're going to get smacked around by the Packers like that. They, and now, you know, now people are going to be saying, oh, well, now Aaron Rodgers has the motivation. I 
I don't know. I really don't know yet. I just don't know. We, we still have a long season hit. We still have 16 weeks left to go in this season. It's going to be crazier, crazy. It's going to get crazier, crazier from here on out, man. Let me tell you. But yeah, that, that pretty much does it. Uh, week 3 preview will be Thursday. Yeah, Thursday. It'll be on Thursday like it, it should be. Uh, so that'll be Thursday afternoon, I guess. Yes, yeah, like Thursday, you know, like noonish. So get your get your lunchables ready, kids, and <laughs> get your lunchables ready. Uh, get your lunchables ready. You know, get get your Capri Suns, get your Kool Aid ready, and let's talk NFL Week Three on Thursday. All right. <laughs> See you, everybody.